So if you have your Bibles, I am in Ezekiel chapter 12. The verses I'm going to read are 18 to 28. Son of man, eat thy bread with quaking, and drink thy water with trembling and with carefulness. And say unto the people of this land, Thus saith the Lord, God of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and of the land of Israel. They shall eat their bread with carefulness and drink their water with astonishment, that their land may be desolate from all that is therein because of the violence of all them that dwell therein. And the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste, and the land shall be desolate, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? Tell them therefore, Thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb even in Israel. But say unto them, The days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. For there shall be no more any vain vision, nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word, and will perform it, saith the Lord God. Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of the times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words now be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. This, not, this also includes America. And the reason why I read it is because the Lord is very angry. He's very angry at the people who are bringing out prosperity and bringing out that everything is fine right now, that things are going to get great, it's going to go back to the way it was, and that we shouldn't be bringing words about judgment and sin and repentance, that they're fear-mongering and that it's not a good idea to bring it, that it's already written in the Bible and everyone knows what it's about. But I tell you now, this is what the Lord spoke to me. I and many others are called to bring warnings just as they did in the days in the Old Testament of the old prophets, of the old messengers called to bring warnings. We are called to warn when we see things far off. We are called. We listen to what God says and tells us. And so this is a very heavy word that the Lord has impressed upon me. It was given to me in bits and pieces and I will not back away from what I have give, been given by the Lord at the time I am to give it. And so the Lord continues, I allow these judgments that you would repent. However, national repentance do I see or hear none of. Therefore, my anger is kindled. Your nation is burning. It is on fire. Now, here is the scripture that he gave me for the so that we can back up all things with scripture. And if you'd like and you still have your Bibles open, go with me to Luke twelve forty nine. <clears throat> this is about peace or division. And I'm just gonna read it right here. I am come to send fire on the earth, 
and what will I if it be already kindled? So the Lord is saying, He's, he's come to send fire. And that word fire means judgments. He's come to bring judgment. That's what fire refers to in this scripture verse. It refers to judgment. Um, I'm going to go on one a little more. Verse 50. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened to be accomplished? 51. Suppose ye that I have come to give peace on earth? I tell you, nay, but rather division. 52. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, verse 53, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And then we're going to drop down to one more. Staying within Luke 12, verse 56. Ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that you do not discern this time? And I'm going to stop there. What God's actually saying is, don't you know the time we're in? Don't you know how far we are? We are further along than people realize. And then he gave me this very brief word. He continued. And he said just these words. Political and financial coup taking place. And then... After that, he gave me another word about Israel this morning, early. He has been downloading quite a bit. I see, this is what he says to Israel. I see what you are doing. I see everywhere and everything. I see into every man's heart. Though you be the apple of my eye, be prepared, be prepared. For consequences that follow. Be prepared for the consequences that follow by the signing. It's in regard to the signing that is supposed to take place tomorrow, Tuesday, September 15th at the White House. Then he goes on. USA. Your lack of injustice your total disrespect for human life leaves nothing to be desired. But more than that, your lack of respect for me, the one you serve, the one you serve is self. Judgment will continue. Church, where is your fear of the Lord? Where truly does your heart lie? What side are you on? I am coming sooner, sooner than anyone thinks. Choose now and choose wisely. And that was the end of the word. So, folks, that was a pretty heavy word. The judgments are going to continue. He's pointing out things. Why? Why? The one thing he is showing in this message is his supremacy over mankind, over the enemy, over all matters of the heart, of the earth. He is showing, he is saying very firmly, I am God. There is no other. I am in control. I am the one that allows things. And yet you despise me. That's what he's saying. You despise me. You have little respect for me. You show by your actions, by your fruit, that you care not. Because if you did, sin would not be abounding. And so now... 
things are heading up. We have smoke and mirrors. We have, if you don't know what that is, I'm just going to tell you real quickly, smoke and mirrors is where things are in a type of illusion, where things look really good or they sound very good, but they're lies with it. And God is not in it. Hell is raising up now more evil. Hell's raising its mouth up to devour people because they're so divided. They're so entranced with what the government is doing and what they're hearing that they have no time to hear God's word or to hear his messenger and prophets because they've already, they've already decided. And then there's God that reigns. But the church has let go of that factor. And so many more people, pastors, leaders, people that used to really, really be so heavy in a relationship with Christ have now turned or turning or have turned over the years. And now the world beckons them. And the church, for the most part, stays silent. So if we're wondering why the judgments and we're hearing these things, it's not that God wants to bring it. It's not that I like to bring these kind of words. But I've been given a call and a charge over the years. I bring very heavy words. And it's not any wonder. Of course people don't want to hear it. Why? Because we want to go in our own way, in our own la-la land, thinking we're fine, thinking we're okay, and that it doesn't matter. God will look the other way. And that's not true. God is not looking the other way. God is very much involved in the matters of the heart and what is going on in rulers and government and environment and financial. He's very much involved and in the church. So this is a very heavy warning. And all I can do is give it. What you do with it is up to you. But he gave me those particular scriptures for a reason. He is very serious about establishing his gov government on earth. And I'm going to tell you, if this continues as we've been hearing about these next pandemic, these next months and different things, I'm going to tell you, if things do not turn around, we're going to have, and, and, and I, I, I know this to be true, it was even given to me a while back about the boils. Those plagues that we read about are going to be right double here. So as we close now, my words to those that are lost, those that have backslidden as they say, I would pray that you will find the Lord. You think it doesn't matter. Maybe you're skeptical about everything. Maybe you've even been hurt. Don't allow the enemy to bring those thoughts to keep you from coming back to the Lord. He will take care of you. He will take and let you know what you need to do. Let us pray right now. And I, while I'm praying, I want to ask the ones, our true believers, our Christians, to come into agreement in this prayer and also ask the Lord to examine you there's choices now that need to be made but the time is slim and I would hate to see you wait till it's too late time is moving on the door is very much closing the a window of time that I spoke about in some of my videos very slim now ready to close Things are coming to this point where it'll be that's that and that's that. And it's very, very serious now. So with our eyes closed, our heads bowed, please come to me into a seriousness. Let's quiet our spirits. Lord, we come before you right now. We ask you, Lord, to examine us. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us of all of our sins, of transgressions, whether we've been awake or asleep, knowingly or unknowingly, sins of omission 
and sins of commission. Demonic influences, things that we take in every day and allow our flesh to rise up. And any unforgiveness, Lord, any curse words, any spoken agreements that were not of you, Lord, anything that is not of you, Lord, we just ask you to forgive us right now. And do a total deep cleaning within us now as our hearts are open, our minds are open, our spirits are open. And you said in your word that you remember our sins no more as far as the east is from the west. Let us not hold offense. Heal our wounds, Lord. Heal whatever needs healed, Lord. And deliver us from all temptation. We ask you, Lord, that for those that need to come to you right now, we ask you, Lord, to take them, forgive them of their sins, and come into their heart and their lives, Lord, that they may begin a whole new walk with you. We know it's a process, Lord, but we pray that you will help us and take us through because it is not your desire for anyone to perish. And we know, Lord, that any, there's not any sin that is too difficult for you to forgive. The enemy tries to come in and bring guilt, condemnation, and shame, and we rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Messiah. We don't allow those thoughts in. We remove them right now. We only ask, Lord, that you forgive us entirely for anything and that you would bring to our remembrance anything that we don't remember or we've had to deal with. And you just, Lord, cleanse us. Give us a fresh new start. We ask you, Lord, right now to let your blood flow over us now, in us, around us, and through us as we give our life to you right now. Help us, Lord. Enable us to see things as you see them and people also. Help us, Lord, open our eyes to truth that we may not be deceived. As we move each day, Lord, let us give glory to you in honor and praise that we none of us may boast or take credit, but thanking you and giving you the glory. Amen and amen. People, if you have prayed and want to send your testimony that you have received Christ, it is time to do so. If you've heard the word of God that he loves you so much because he gave his life, please let me know. If you uh, will read John 3, 16 and 17 and start there and really read it, you will see the depth of what God has done. I also encourage you to read a vision, the full chapter 1 and the full chapter 2 and even take a notebook and write out what God says about you and camp out in it and really reread it and meditate on it and you will see the love and who you are created in Christ Jesus and you will come to know Him. Well, thank you everyone for listening Thank you for your kind words, your encouragement. We pray for each other. We uplift each one. We look at our prayer requests that come through. Again, everything is on the website. We will be operating more from there in the future. And may we say thank you for our fellow brothers and sisters. We love you so much. May God richly bless you. Amen and amen.